life, Matthew chapter 6, and we're going to move to verse 11. Uh, if you're from, uh, well, some of my family's from Alabama, they say 11. All right. <laughs> uh, verse 11, and it says, Give us this day our daily bread. Everybody said it with us together. Come on. Give us this day, Give us this day. Our, daily our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. I want to uh, shift gears today. I want to talk about uh, this morning divine delivery. Divine delivery. I want to deal with the provision of prayer. The provision of prayer. The provision of of prayer. Now we've been dealing very uh, strategically uh, in this season being sensitive by the Spirit of God. This is Lent and Lent uh, is a time of prayer. It's a time of also giving and it is also a time of fasting, a time of really seeking the mind of God as we are on the road to resurrection. Uh, in the Christian tradition and the Christian calendar, the church calendar, uh, Easter, resurrection uh, is a time in which we are excited about uh, what Jesus did uh, as he died, was buried, and then also got up from the grave. And so this Lenten season, this 40-day season, this 40-day journey, excluding Sundays, is a time of preparation. Everybody say preparation. And even though we are not a uh, as traditional liturgical church, we do observe this time as a time of prayer and a time of reflection, a time of contemplation. And even as we look at some of the shifts that have happened in just a short period of time from Parkland incident and then even uh, this week with the transition of a great man of God and that of uh, Dr. Billy Graham, one that God used to preach to over 200 million people. Uh, you can't even wrap your mind around that. This is before social media and all of that. Uh, who God used to touch over 190 nations uh, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so all of this has significance. Uh, just like they said, I believe it was the color purple. God's trying to tell us something. And we have to make sure that we lean in. Look, up, look at somebody and tell them lean in to what God is saying uh, in this season. Divine delivery. We want to deal with the provision of prayer. Now, it's very interesting when we begin to really understand the Lord's Prayer, the model prayer, if you will, because we understand that John 17 could be better understood as the Lord's Prayer, for this is high priestly prayer. But as we begin to move forward or move further into this prayer, we've already begun to lay some foundation and we begin to understand uh, the dynamics of our Father and then understanding, uh, hallowed be thy name, and then recognizing uh, not just our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, and then recognizing the dynamic of the kingdom that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then now we're shifting gears into give us this day our daily bread. Notice it is very interesting that we are now moving into our own needs. We don't start the prayer with our needs, but we now shift into our needs. But we oftentimes do the opposite in our lives. Stay with me. We oftentimes jump into our needs first, and then afterward we'll leave the rest of our time in prayer to whatever we think God might want. But when you really begin to see the model that he establishes for us, he allows us, first of all, to move into adoration. And after we move from adoration, then we shift to asking. And too many times we are focused on asking before we even give adoration to God. It's similar to uh, when somebody calls you who never calls you. And uh, they only call you when they want something. And so you already know how the phone call is before they even say, hey, how you doing? They're already asking you for what they want. And we sometimes have that same habit when it comes to God. But we must understand that he establishes a framework of adoration. And then we move to asking. So when we see our Father, by way of review, when we see our Father, we understand relationship. Which then uh, positions us in the place of praise. But then when we move to hallowed be thy name, we move from relationship to worship which then shifts us to priority. 
But then when we move to thy kingdom come, we then posture ourselves in lordship. And then now when Jesus says for us to pray, give us this day our daily bread, we move into sonship. When it comes to children, we have children here, and, and you see them all the time. There's two major things that a child will always need, and that is food and forgiveness. Food because they're always going to be hungry. And if they're not hungry now, before the day is out, they're going to be even more hungry later. But there also is a need of forgiveness. When the boo-boos happen and when things happen that you have to clean up, how many know, know what I'm talking about? Amen. Okay, that, that there's a need for both food and forgiveness. God, in his wisdom, in his mercy, in his grace, brings the groceries, food. But he also takes out the garbage by giving us forgiveness. And notice, when we begin to look at this, he says, give us this day our daily bread. Growing up in Brooklyn especially, uh, you are always going to be bombarded uh, by these advertisements uh, by our brethren from the Chinese food. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Amen. Uh, they'll, they'll put so many ads inside of your phone and inside of your house and all of that. You'll be looking and you'll see nothing but ads and ads and ads. And it says normally on it, free deliver. And that's good because normally if you pay a little minimum of $8, $9, $10, they'll deliver the food to your house. We have gone in our culture from delivery boys for packages, from telegrams to now Uber Eats, in which we are accustomed to knowing when something is going to come, the exact time is going to arrive, where they are on their way to bring it to you. How many of you have ever had to track a shipment? Amen. And you know, they ask you for your tracking number. And the tracking number will enable you to understand and recognize where it is at a particular moment. I love it because whenever I need something to come to me, I can always look. Uh, I can always look, Sir Gene, because I know that when I look, I know specifically when to be home for it to arrive. But when you have a relationship with God, he doesn't always deliver things the same way you can track them. Amen. <laughs> uh, when it comes to heaven's delivery, it looks diametrically different from how God does things. And so when we begin to get to this dynamic of the prayer, we move from spiritual things to practical things. And we began to move from adoring to asking. Daily bread involves several things. First of all, it involves physical needs. Physical needs. Physical needs. Physical needs. We, we are encouraged to pray for our physical needs. Social needs. Social needs. Social needs, the things around us. And that's why we even have prayer requests and things that you're seeking for, desiring for, trying to figure out and even lifting things up for others. But then also financial needs. Financial needs. And spiritual needs. So daily bread involves physical, social, financial, and spiritual. But how do we now establish what this looks like. Let's, let's really give with a frame for what this looks like because we're moving from praise and priority to now petition. And let's really look at this and I want us to go take us through some scriptures because I believe there's some things that God begins to do as we begin to understand this. The first thing we have to do is establish a proper priority. Uh, Lean over and somebody tell them prioritize. Prioritize. Let's look at Matthew 6 and 33. It says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Don't seek the thing first. Seek me first. Because when you seek me, you'll begin to already understand, and I already have an understanding of where you are and what you need. 
So we have to establish a proper priority. Uh, there was a story I heard old preacher say that uh, when he looked at an old Bible, and you know, I, I love old Bibles, and C.H. Spurgeon said that a, a broken down Bible is normally held together by someone whose life isn't broken down. And I, I've discovered that, you know, you lean over and you'll find sometimes folk that have been walking with God a long time. And they got all kinds of stuff in their Bible. And then, you know, like some of the old mothers keep a little money in the Bible and all kinds of stuff. And there was an old mother uh, in a church that uh, when you came and you looked at her Bible for the book of Matthew, she had one of the Bibles with the large prayer. And inside of it, uh, by Matthew 6 and 33, John, uh, there was a little writing in pencil that said T and P. A little boy looked over by her and said, Mother, why, why do you have T and P written by Matthew 6.33? She said, Son, T and P means try and prove them. <laughs> he said, What do you mean? He said, uh, uh, When, when I, I ever try to figure out what I need, when I seek him first, uh, I know that he makes a way out of no way. Yeah. I have come to the realization that I know it for myself. And so she wrote down by the verse TNP because she tried it and he proved it. I wonder if there's somebody here this morning that can testify like that old mother in the church that can say, I have tried it for myself. When I seek him, things change in my life. When I seek him first, I'm able to understand what he's doing in my life. And so we recognize and understand. Now watch this. Watch this. It's very important for us to understand this. Notice now, bread is for strength. Bread is for strength. I know we're in a hypervitamin age, and I understand that. We're in a vitamin. we got a vitamin for everything and a pill for everything. You just pop it in, and you're supposed to lose 50 pounds in a day and all of that. I know we're in that kind of time, okay? Uh, but, but vitamins are a supplement, not a substitute. Hear me carefully. Vitamins are a supplement, not a substitute. If you only eat vitamins, you'll die. Why? Because there's no nourishment in just vitamins. Bread is for strength. And strength is for service. Bread is for strength. And strength is for service. What do you mean, bitch? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? See... Jesus, when he is in the book of Luke, uh, he in Luke in chapter 4, Matthew chapter 4, when, when he's in the wilderness by himself and the devil tempts him. And when the devil tempts him, some things begin to happen. And he looks at him and says, if you're really the son of God, command these stones to become bread. And what does Jesus say? Jesus says, man shall not live by what? Bread alone. But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. He's picking up off of what Moses said in the book of Deuteronomy. Why? Because if there is a proceeding word, there is always a process. And the proceeding word releases the process, and the process brings progress. Better hear what I'm saying. He says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of oh, that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So as I am in line with his will, he will begin to show me the process that I must take to manifest that which he already has prepared for me. And the process leads to progress. So when we begin to understand this, we have to establish a proper priority. When we pray, is it just needy, just based off of what I need? Or am I first of all recognizing what his desires are for me? So first of all, establishing a proper priority. Let's, let's take it a step further. Secondly, we want to express a practical petition. And this is something I want to really take time with because a lot of times we, you know, growing up, we, I, we had professional prayers. And people that uh, got up eternal, marvelous monarch of the universe and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, you just sat there and said, wow, look at that. I can't do that. And, and all of that. But, but it's very practical. He says, give us this day our daily bread. Something very simple as bread. Something as simple as bread should not be taken lightly when it comes to God. 
And sometimes we think that the situation we have in front of us is too small to pray for. Or too big to pray for. But he says expressing, uh, we want to express a practical petition. Matthew 7 and 11. Matthew 7 and 11. Well, well let's start with verse 7. Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who acts receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. Or what man is there among you, if his son asks for bread, will he give him a stone? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Here is something that the Lord's been really, really, really dealing with me about. About. And I want to really get this uh, and really allow us to understand this. Go to James chapter 4, verse 2. James chapter 4, verse 2. I'm gonna I want to share this with you because I believe that uh, once we hit this vein, something's gonna hit this place. Uh, because God God really has been awaking me, uh, waking me up and stirring me with this all the time, left and right. Notice what happens in James chapter 4. James chapter 4. He says, you lust and do not have, you murder and covet and cannot obtain, you fight and war. But notice now he says, and yet you have not because you ask not. And you ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures or on your desires. He says, you have not because you ask not. You have not because you ask not. And I believe in this season, God is saying to us, ask for more. Ask for more. Lean over and somebody and tell them, ask for more. Ask for more. And this is something that the Spirit of God began to really deal with me about this week, Greg. Uh, he said, the great mystery in the world today is not unanswered prayer, but unoffered prayer. The greatest mystery in the world today is not unanswered prayer, but unoffered prayer. God is saying, ask me. I have things prepared for you. I have things planned for you. I have things that I desire to do for you. But if you would only have asked me, you'd be able to receive them. I remember a story I was reading this week uh, about a, a pastor uh, down in Florida. Uh, he, he had behind his house uh, a tree that produced oranges, but they were sour oranges. They were sour oranges. And so the oranges, uh, if you ate them, they had a very bitter taste to them. And so they weren't the kind you'd want to eat. As soon as you would eat it, you spit it out immediately. And he was at church, and a deacon came up to him and said, Pastor, I have a big orange tree. And I want to give you some oranges. He gave him a big sack of oranges. He said, I'm not going to be able. My wife and I can't eat all these oranges by ourselves. So he put the oranges in his closet. He had a closet full of oranges. He went out by his deck on top and began to look and just sit out there. And while he's sitting out there, he saw a little boy peeking, peeking below, but never looking up. That's oftentimes what we do whenever we're trying to figure things out. We, we're, we're, we're looking online and searching Facebook and Instagram for an answer instead of taking time to look up. The boy never took the time to look up, but he's pacing back and forward trying to figure out what he should do. And what happens? He takes one of the sour oranges because he was hungry. The man immediately tried to run out from the back to the front to grab him because he was upset because all he was saying was if he had knocked on my door and said he was hungry, I had a closet full of brand new oranges. But he took the sour one and settled for it because he did not ask me for what I had. That's the same thing that happens with God. God has things lined up and prepared for us. But the things he has lined up and prepared for us, oftentimes some of them we don't receive because we don't ask for it. Proverbs 25 and 2 is the glory of God. It's the glory of God to, to it is the glory of God to search out a matter, but it's the glory of kings to search it out. 
God hides things for us, not from us. He hides things for us, not from us. And it is the discovery that we begin to pursue that gives us insight and instruction for what he desires to do in our lives. Psalm 2 and 8 says, Ask me, ask me for the nations, and I will make the nations of your inheritance. God is saying to us this morning, Ask me. Whatever it is that you are believing me for, ask me. Diligently ask me. Seek me. For if you ask me, I'll give it to you. If it's in alignment with my will. I want to move finally. Number three, exercise a personal plan. I'm almost finished. Exercise a personal plan. Exercise a personal plan. In Jeremiah chapter 3, 33, chapter 33, and verse 3, something comes here, and I want to lay this out uh, for all of us this morning because I believe that this is critical for what God is saying. He says, call to me, and I will answer you, and I will show you great and mighty things. Everybody say mighty things. Mighty. I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Ask me, call to me, call out to me, cry out to me. If you do this, I will show you what I'm about to do. So I'm asking the other day, uh, well, what do you think about what's going on with, with thank God for legacy of Billy Graham and what God's about to do? And, and do, you think, do you think we'll uh, have another one like that or who's like that and all of that? I said, those are the wrong questions. What we need to ask is ask God, what do you want to do now? Amen. Because God raises up individuals based upon the context and the culture and the condition of that time. And therefore, the context changes, the culture changes, and the condition changes. Therefore, God, who, what, how do we respond to the season that we are in? Jeremiah says, we have to ask him. Call to me, and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things. No translation in Hebrew is, I will give you inaccessible things. <laughs> Look at somebody and tell them inaccessible things. Inaccessible. Last week, the other day, I was headed to a funeral in, in Newark, New Jersey, and uh, was taking the uh, Jersey Transit. And any time you take it, uh, before it, it lifts off, it lifts off at the exact time. It's not like the uh, metro, uh, the regular MTA train. That train, if it says whatever that time is, is out that time. Sometimes a minute or two before. And, and so I'm, I'm trying to, pacing, trying to get on the train because I wanted to make sure I was at the funeral in time. And I came up, a child that came up, to a locked door. And I looked back, all the rest of the doors were locked, and I said, now wait a minute, the train's got to be open. And there was a conductor that began to walk past me. And I said, sir, that, am, am I at the wrong train? He said, no. I said, uh, how do I get on? He said, follow me. The door that was locked, he got a key and opened the door for me. Everybody else had to walk all the way to the end of the train. I walked into an empty car because I asked him, do you have a way for me to get on the train? What was inaccessible to everybody else became accessible to me because I knew who to ask. We are asking the wrong people to solve our stuff instead of going back to God and saying, God, why well, I need a word from you. Oh, I need a word from God. Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know if I would draw that self from me. Where would I go? We used to sing a song that said, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. Daily bread is showing you that you have stuff that only God can give. I need God to provide for me every single day of my life. I notice what happens. He says, call to me. And I will show you great and mighty things that you do not know. I have discovered kind of that if God doesn't give me what I ask, he gives me better than I ask. Amen. Amen. I can be asking for one thing, and he'll do something that'll literally have me sit there dumbfounded. And sometimes I'm standing up before you, and I don't even know how whatever we just got happened, because I'm sitting there thinking it's going to happen one way. And God has a whole other way that he begins to answer it. That's why he's going to say he's an all-time God. Uh, he may not come when I 
I'm on them or when you on them or whenever we think the delivery should come. But when he comes, he's always on time. Is there anybody here this morning that can testify? Even when I don't know when it's coming, I know something is on the way. And since I know something is on the way, I have to raise my expectation for what God is about to do. Yes. And so when I understand that I'm called to establish a proper priority, to express a practical petition, and then to exercise a personal plan, how does that work? I'm going to give you uh, these specific keys of how to exercise a practical plan for effective prayer. Very simple. Very simple. Very simple. I want to make this so we understand it. First of all, we need to be in the will of God. Everybody say the will of God. I shared a little bit about that last week, but give you one more scripture on this, and then I'm going to shift gears. Re uh, Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. 22 to 25. Grandmother used to say, I'm going to give you enough scripture so you can preach your own sermon. All right, Hebrews chapter 10. You preached on your job all week long. All right, 22. It says, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Hear this carefully. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. <laughs> I always get excited when I see that verse because I recognize and I understand that whatever God has said, he's faithful to perform it. Amen. Even if it doesn't happen on my clock or my agenda, uh, sometimes I have plans, five-year plans and ten-year plans and twenty-year plans and A, B, C, D to Z plans. And then when all of my plans from A to Z or Z to A fall apart, I still find that God has a way of putting that thing together in a way that I didn't even know was possible because he begins to do it. Why? Because he who promised is faithful. He says, let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Uh, faith, I saw this the other day uh, when I was out and I, I, I never forgot it was on a, a painting or a picture somewhere. And it says, hope is the ability to hear the music of the future. But faith is the courage to dance to it today. Hope is the ability to hear the music of the future. But faith is the courage to dance to it today. I, I don't see it yet, but I know it's coming. I, I don't know how it's going to happen, but, but I know it's coming. I, I have no idea when it's going to happen, but I know it's coming. And, and so I'm not going to allow weariness to come because my prayer doesn't get answered. When I prayed it, I'm going to diligently pray and believe and wait for those who wait on the Lord. He shall renew their strength. And so I have to be in the will of God that I have to believe it is the will of God to provide for me. Your expectation determines your reception. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Your expectation determines your reception. And God wants us to understand in this hour, we have to raise our expectation. Because we have to believe God to give us bread, not crumbs. He said, give us this day our daily bread. Not to give us the crumbs, but he said, I'm going to provide for you at the way and the means of what I'm going to do in you. So I have to believe in the, be in the will of God, believe it is the will of God to provide for me. And then I have to be specific, telling him I need and this requires us to enjoy present provision. As I close, the main question we have to begin to wrestle with, that we have to begin to deal with, uh, is the question of desire. Do you want a warehouse of stale bread or a father who owns a bakery? He says, give us this day our daily bread. Which means he gives us just enough for that day. While everybody's running to the warehouse, if you keep that bread there for that day, by the time you turn around, it's going to be hard when you bite into it. Oh, but if you get some Panera bread, come on somebody. 
if you get some bread that, that has been refined and freshly baked, uh, I used to really love Subway because Subway was right by where my school was in the city. And, and I would come there early enough for lunchtime, John, just so I, I can get to Subway because I knew if I got there when the bread was coming out, when I ordered my Italian herb and cheese, I could see the bread. In fact, somebody knows what I'm talking about. I could see the bread beginning to rise. And as the bread began to rise, I was ready to tear that bread up because I knew that it had been prepared for me. If God can do that for Panera, if God can do that for Subway, if God can do that for anything else, what will he not do for his children when they ask for bread? And so we come to his table and we say give us this day. Not tomorrow because my dose for tomorrow won't be like what I need for today. Yesterday is in the tomb. Tomorrow is in the womb. Give me the bread I need right now. And as we receive our daily bread, we begin to see that which we need for the moment, we receive in the moment. And then we take the step of faith, trusting that he's going to lead us and guide us. Jesus says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. The preceding word births a process, and the process brings us progress. God bless you, my friend. I want to thank you so much for watching this video. I pray that a word was spoken that transforms and changes your life. Please stay connected with us, www.globalfirenow.com. I'd love to hear from you. Expect prayer.